wait for the gate to open to get in the show. My plan was to be there early, but traffic was slow. Anyway, I reached the tent on time, but I had to join a line. If you see me crawl back now, waiting to enjoy this whole line. Yeah. At New AFC promised more jobs and a good life. Instead, we lost 30,000 jobs. Taxes went up. People are less safe and cost of living skyrocketed. Now, after four years of neglect and corruption, the APNU AFC gang are coming with more empty promises. Only cause they need you now. We are smart. Fool me once, shame on you. This time, we will not be fooled by your sneaky fake news, APNU promises. We vote in PPPC to get Guyana working again. It's a gorgeous Saturday in our nation. Beautiful sunshine. The Amazon won their first game on Thursday night. Looking forward to a great game tonight. I hope uh, we all get a chance to go and uh, enjoy, you know, some of our nation's treasures or cricket. We have a lot to discuss today and I want to really take your phone calls uh, to discuss our current issues. We all know the GCOM fiasco continues. And um, I think now the pressure is on Justice Claudia Singh to live up to her word that she will follow the constitution. If you realize what is happening is the GCOM PNC commissioners and the GCOM secretariat are in sync with each other. It's like government control of GCOM right now. All rational decisions coming from Guyanese, coming from the international community, and most importantly, coming from our constitution, is in conflict with the PNC-run GCOM and their commissioners. So the, the gimmicks is not, not something that we should tolerate. The pressure is on. You know, the September 18th that we talked about so many times, even though the government is illegal since March 21st, if we are considerate and give them the extra three months based on the Caribbean court ruling, which would take us to September 18th, really doesn't matter, they're still illegal. But the pressure is going to start rapidly and radically. I believe we cannot, as Guyanese, stand up after that if GCOM chairman doesn't follow her words and live up to the Constitution. She cannot allow the PNC-led GCOM secretariat and commissioners to overrule the Constitution. So Justice Father Singh got to step up, fulfill her role as a consensus nominee and, and selected candidate for the GCOM chairmanship and do what she said she would do, follow the constitution. The constitution is extremely clear. You know, this week we saw the attorney general, caretaker attorney general, that is supposed to have already resigned and not functioning in his role, file, file a, uh, a rebuttal to the case that says they must resign after the no confidence vote. Here's the constitution that is extremely clear. After no confidence vote, the government, the cabinet, the president must resign with immediate effect. And the attorney general, caretaker, attorney general that shouldn't even be there as I said, is going to file a case against the resignation. It tells you what level of dictatorship we have come to, level of bullyism from the PNC. You know, blatantly disregarding the Constitution, blatantly infiltrated the GCOM, which is supposed to be an independent body. So when the president lied to us and says he's waiting on a GCOM date, 
That is a blatant lie because they control GCOM. And they, how could the PNC commissioners be in sync with the GCOM secretariat? You have to wonder. And now they're talking about a 2020 date, a year after they were supposed to be out of office. That is, that is I, I would consider it criminal to break the law in our constitution and be allowed to get away with it. And I tell you, the pressure is going to have to step up. The international community, our people of our nation, the opposition party, got to step up. And I mean, this is so blatant dictatorship that we're seeing in our nation. It is affecting our image around the world. It's affecting our economy. It's affecting our business. It's affecting our foreign relations. And this is something that the people of Guyana, we the people of Guyana, should not ever allow to happen. The president has blatantly disregarded our constitution and is blatantly hanging on to power. They are so afraid of election. They so want to rig this election that they need as much time as possible, every single excuse in the book to come up with in order not to go to elections. They are so afraid. I mean, if, they, if I was in their case, knowing that you will lose, probably would you know, not know what to do. But if you are a patriot of Guyanese, a Guyanese, if you were sworn to follow and uphold the constitution, Mr. Granger, you would have already resigned. You would have already called elections. You know, this week, you yourself, imagine you put all those burden, taxes, take away the miners' land, you know, did so many bad things to the miners over the four years you've been in power. And then you call a meeting with the miners who all showed up for the free food. And then you ask them to write down their grudges with you. When you created the grudges, the miners are really crazy. You created those grudges. You created the, the, the taxes on them. You took away their land. And then you asked them to write down their grudges and give it back to you. You're a madman. Because that's, I mean, if I was a miner, I would not even show up. I would have sent you the letter and says, if you want to know what you did to us, here's what you did to us. But to invite them to state house when you, you know, took them down the, to, down the road to you know, to, to bankruptcy almost, many of them, and then gonna ask them what are their grudges. Just like you added the taxes on to the hinterland people for for air flight and for cargo to the hinterland, then you showed up four years later and says, okay, I'm taking it off. Acting like you didn't put it on. That's deceiving, Mr. Granger. You're starting to really, really get this country upset because you're holding on to power one illegally blatantly dictatorship two you're actually lying to the country and you know basically doing things and then coming back and and trying to fix it at the last minute you have not showed up across the country in four years and now you want to wait and buy time so you can recover and go around the nation and try to act like you are doing something for the country the people of our nation knows that. They know you have not showed up. Your cabinet didn't show up over the last four years. They're now hustling, begging, and stealing, stealing the time from the people by breaking the law and not upholding the Constitution. The cabinet that should have resigned after the no-confident vote that is still blatantly in power. And I don't know what the criminal activity, I'm no lawyer, but... As a lay person, that's breaking the law. At a new election, some of them should go to jail because you can't break the law and not go to jail. Mr. Granger, you have really embarrassed our nation. I hope and I sincerely hope that as soon as this magic date of September 18 comes, that you know we all kind of bought into after the March 21st date passed and the court system was allowed to um, review 
the Constitution and then basically agreed with the Constitution, the international community will be faced with probably the toughest decision and should not be tough because you are now across the line. All these contracts we see you're still signing. I hope those countries and those companies and all of them know that they're signing an illegal contract. We know the business community are very upset with what is going on in the economy today. We know the people across the nation is upset because money is not flowing. You have put a standstill to our nation since the no confidence vote. You have failed to do what is necessary. Imagine England, a 45 million people or so, I don't know the exact numbers, make all elections and within a month they can have elections. And you waited a year and saying you need a year to call elections in our country when we had a credible list, a val valid list, claims and objection would have resolved that. Instead, you wasted billions of our taxpayers' money running around the country with people trying to re-register us. When then the Constitution and the judge says it is an illegal activity, stop it. Now you're trying to use that bad data to put into good data. It's a madman, Mr. Granger. Only mad people do crazy things because you can't take unverified data and put it in verified data and try to match it up. That's a recipe for disaster. Now, if you can extract the, the 2,000 or so that may be new registrants, then we go back and verify those 2,000 people are real people. Then we can add 2,000 to the list. Simple. But the madness that you are talking about of merging bad data with good data no statistician, no rational person would ever do that. Whether it's for business, whether it's for politics, whether it's for, for, for research, it's, it's a laugh. And Mr. Granger, I think you are becoming the comedian in our nation. And I know when, you know what people are saying about you? If you go and ask people, they may be afraid to tell you that you're a comedian. But Mr. Granger, you're a comedian. You're doing irrational things that is affecting us, the people. And we have a right to speak out. And if you're out there, you have a right to speak out. When we start coming out and standing up and saying this country cannot function anymore because it's an illegal government, they need to step down. They need to call elections. I hope you're there ready and willing because it's your future, our future at stake when you have a dictatorship that is blatantly taking our country apart piece by piece, dismantling what we have built in democracy, dismantling. You see what's going on in Venezuela. You see what is happening in any country that has dictatorship, but we know what every country that has dictatorship around the world from Iran to Libya and Iraq and those places that that had it, when those leaders fall, they fall hard. And Mr. Granger, you ought to be looking at when a leader that takes power with disregard to our democracy and disregard to our constitution, they fall hard. And you are taking away our right to vote for who we want. You're taking away the people's right to vote. And the, every time you delay and hide behind a GCOM that you've infiltrated, and I hope Justice Singh is listening because she promised when she was nominated and selected by the opposition leader and, and the caretaker president to lead GCOM, she said she will follow the constitution. And the Constitution is clear. So if she allows the PNC bullyism in GCOM to outshine her democracy and her decision-making power to follow the Constitution, that would be a sad day in our nation. 
and the time has passed. There have been five, six meetings so far and nothing from her. I don't know what's happening. I don't know who's, who's, who's faking the, the, the data, but it's as clear as clear can be. You've got a list that is valid. You've got new registrants. You got a claim and objection. You know who is there. Get on with putting it together. As I said, merging on verified data with verified data is the, the most dangerous exercise we can do. We will have an election that is so messed up because the data is not going to be accurate. It, it cannot be accurate. And you may be disenfranchised from voting. Some of you may not be allowed to vote because your name would show up on the list two times. And when you go to vote, it says you can't vote because your name is on the list two times. Or those who got their name on the list two times may end up going and vote two times. It's the most dangerous thing we can do in our nation. And Justice Clarence is saying we need to step up and ensure that our democracy doesn't fail. It's already failed by Mr. Granger and we cannot allow it to fail anymore. And I hope the international community is paying attention what they did in Venezuela, naming a, a president the outside of what is the current president. They've got a lot of other work to do in Guyana. You know, 50 countries recognize the opposition leader as president of Venezuela. Will they recognize our opposition leader as president of Guyana come September 18? It's a lot to look forward to. You know, we're going to see the double standards, both the Americans, the British, the Canadians. They are going to be faced with, are they having double standards? The two countries that is right next door. Regional stability is at stake to those international communities. Regional stability is at stake. We've got issues with, with our land, with Venezuela. They're arguing how to arrest the opposition leader and the recognized president because he said he may not want to come into to Guyana anymore and take her land. But another group is saying they're ready to come in and take her land. Regional stability is at stake. And I told the U.S. doesn't want regional instability. So the double standards that is going to take place, do they recognize the opposition leader in Venezuela's president by not recognizing that we have an illegal president in Guyana? I'm really looking forward to September 18 and we will know what crap we're dealing with because we the people have to take things in our own hands and stand up for our democracy and I urge you not to allow Mr. Granger anymore to take our democracy to a point where it's full dictatorship. And at this point, if I had to categorize Guyana, if I was sitting on the outside and I'm not understanding what's happening, Mr. Granger is a full-time dictator. He's a full-time dictator. He has broken the law. He did not follow the constitution. He did not resign. His cabinet did not resign. He has not called a date. He is still in office taking our money that's a dictator we have allowed and I say we because we have not done enough to stop the dictatorship after 28 years of dictatorship that saw many people left Guyana we saw the shambles of 1968 to 1992 we saw the death a $2.1 billion US in our nation where we couldn't even afford to pay that back. We saw where the country was at. The infrastructure was all gone. And then you give these PNC people a chance. Not even the reform part of the PNC on the Hoyt, which probably would have done a better job than Mr. Granger. Mr. Granger was the Burnamite. Mr. Hoyt at least had some initiatives and some reform plans in his, his period as president. Mr. Granger left off where Mr. Barnum's left off and he tried to implement it in the last four years. And if you notice people, if you notice Guyana, 
prior to 2015. And you notice, Guyana, between 2015 and 2019, and you're older, you're maybe not a young person that understand what the 80s were like, and the 90s for the most part. And, and what you are suffering today is probably equivalent to what people suffered in before and they probably did very worse because you at least had a better chance under the 2050 before 2015 to build your bank account to own your home to own your car some of you have lost it 30,000 people have lost their jobs but maybe you know you did well prior to 2015 to survive these four years but any time after this imagine these guys continuing for more than this time what will our country look like even six months from now our economy would be grinding to a halt you know the miners that went to mr uh, mr granger's house not his house our house and he fed them with our money i stole him you screwed us up mr granger we are now in the position we are in and you're asking us to let you know what our grudges are to the vendors and it gets worse why we know the dictatorship here we've got two major com companies in guyana queens atlantic who employs thousands of, i mean you know hundreds of people gbti that it, that employs hundreds of people and you're going to go after them four years later saying when they purchased the land for the GBTI headquarters or this the Santa complex that they did not pay enough so now you're going to levy 16 million US dollars against a company that probably will bankrupt them and hundreds of people will lose their jobs for what why would you do that mr granger these companies are local companies they employ our people you have given away our wealth mr granger to foreign companies companies like trinidadian companies that have come into our country just won a 30 million us dollar contract with some of the boys the foreign companies to do logistics they don't hire our people or even if they hire a few all that profit goes back to trinidad you have given away our oil to to tolo one percent deal and you want to go after our local companies to take away their money so they now would have to fire their employees or lay off their employees have you no shame mr granger don't you care about our people and our with our flag and what it means to our people you can sit there like a colonial master and give away our wealth to foreign companies and allow our local companies that employ hundreds of people and you're gonna go after them for money because you thought they didn't pay enough for land 10 years ago valuation was totally different 10 years ago and those companies got the land and they did not go sell it off and made a profit off of it they built businesses they employ our people that have money now to go take care of their family they did not run away with our profits and take it somewhere else like these foreign companies are doing they're reinvesting in Guyana, GBTI, Queens Atlantic. All these companies are investing back in our nation. They're not taking our money out of Guyana. Ask those foreigners that you're giving away our land or concessions to. Imagine a foreign company comes into Guyana and gets duty free and tax free. If you take a hundred dollars for an item and you you buy an item for a hundred and you sell it for a hundred and sixty dollars that company makes sixty dollars profit minus shipping our Guyanese company can't compete because if they sell it for a hundred and sixty dollars they've got to pay thirty percent duty and thirty percent corporate tax 
So their profit is zero. Why that company profit is 55 to $60? That's the reality of the numbers. So how is our Guyanese company going to compete with supplying the oil companies with logistics and with pipes and with water and with bolts and nuts with whatever else these oil companies need because they can't. 30% duty, 30% taxes. Trinidadian company comes in, they get 30% tax free and duty, 30% tax free and taxes. Bingo. They can drop their price to $140 and make $40 profit. We bid on $140 on a project, we will lose $20. That's the reality, people, of our numbers. So when you hear us say Mr. Granger is anti Guyanese, he's anti Guyanese. The man doesn't care about our nation. Any, any president, and we know he's gone from a president to a caretaker president to undertaker president, is burying our economy. You cannot do that, Mr. Granger, to our, our, our local companies. Your job is to, to build our local companies up. Give them the same. If you have to give the foreigners concessions, look at their competition in Guyana. So if a logistics company come into Guyana or a supply company come into Guyana that can supply pipes to oil companies or building materials, find a local company and give them the same concession. If it's five local companies, give them the same concessions. Let's now have real competition. Now the local companies will have to work harder, but you know what, at the end of it, if we win that contract as a local company, guess what we have to do? We have to hire you, the people, to do the work. The foreigners don't have to hire you. They bring in their workers from Houston. They bring in their workers from Trinidad. They may hire some of you to sweep the floors and to empty the trash and one or two engineers, but we don't get the work. We don't. It's gone. Mr. Granger is unpatriotic. He has disowned our nation. And we, the people, look in your pocketbooks at the end of this month. I know many of you saved up money just to buy a CPL ticket for cricket, $5,000 for two of the stands, 3,000, 4,000 for the other one and 2,000 for the party stand. You know how much you would have to, just because our love for cricket, what the sacrifice you had to make to go to a game? When you have companies, the foreign companies buying blocks of tickets, and you know giving it away to themselves foreigners and maybe a few of us out there you know it's a good thing i saw the pvp bought a lot of tickets and they passed out as much as they can pass out to people that couldn't afford it to those thirty thousand people that are off work to some of the workers out there that didn't couldn't afford and wanted to go to the games saw that jagdio giving out tickets that he's got. Did the government buy tickets for you? Did the government give you any free tickets? They probably got a few tickets from Exxon and probably gave it to you. Did you get a free ticket? Think of where your money is coming from. What Mr. Granger has done to us is brought our economy to a standstill where we can't even enjoy, you know, our love for a sport. And though we're gonna find that money to go, I can tell you, we will find the money. If you have to borrow it, we'll borrow it because we love our cricket. But when we have to pay it back and we have to find money for our school children lunch and our and our uniforms and other items for our children, we've got to now make other sacrifices. This month, last month, all of you would have got the ten thousand school grant per child. Some of you have four kids, that's $40,000. Maybe you would have keep $5,000 and take it, your, your child to cricket. 
Mr. Granger took that 40,000 away from you and he gave you a school bag made in China that is torn in half if you just hold it and rip it. That's what he did. And you want to call him a president? I call him the undertaker because he is no longer our president. March 21st, he became illegal. And the longer he continues, he's a dictator. And dictators take advantage of a nation around the world. Mr. Burnham took advantage of a nation. Mr. Granger's taking advantage of a nation. I said, I'll take your phone calls. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I missed. And dictators take advantage of a nation because there's no parliament to manage. Parliament is in recess. Parliament really can't do any business either. Good day. Good day, how are you? Good day. Was excellent, good everything. Okay? Yes. Everything is true about the illegal government and on a take off and take care of. And all his ministers, coconut rights, coconut hair people are part of town. We need people like you. <laughs> Thank you. The coconut heads. That's a good, good description. Now you crack a coconut and open, full of water, a little jelly. You got me stunned there, caller. Good day. Good day. I, I feel the same thing as the caller just said. We need more vibrant politicians. I think Jagmeo is doing a good job, but I feel you, Christopher Ram, Pradiki Soon, and so on, should form another party. I agree that, okay, some people are with, with PVP and so on, but I feel, I see violence in you, in Christopher Ram, and Pradiki Soon. And if possible, you could bring a Balkan. I think you all would do something better for this country. Thank you. Well, I'm a big supporter of the PVP. Thank you, caller. We are all Christopher Ram, Freddie Kissoon. If you if you see what they have been writing, what I've been saying, our argument is to follow the Constitution. Freddie Kissoon, I've said many times recently, what this government is doing is dictatorship. I don't know if he used those words, but he said they're breaking, they're not following the Constitution. Christopher Ram has gone to court and spent his own money and won all the cases fighting for the right of democracy. We are bonded together for the right of democracy. When Mr. Charnas voted to the no confidence and the people of our land says they don't have any confidence in this government, that was democracy. We are fighting for democracy. And I believe the PVP party is ready to take our nation. They've got a master plan. They've got an integrated plan of economics and social and culture, all put together, political governance, all put together in an integrated approach. And when implemented, will really bring the changes we all wanted over the next decade. And we will see that rapidly. We will see that rapidly. So it's not about forming a new party, sir. It's about us all binding together and ensure that dictatorship never again gets a chance to rule our nation like it did. Dictatorship should never be allowed to rule our nation again. Mr. Granger has faked his way into to our, our country from the no confidence vote. He's there that he should not be there. He's scared of an election. I've never seen a man so scared of the election as Mr. Granger. Soon he gets up there. Oh, GCOM. GCOM. I'm waiting on GCOM. Then he sends his people into GCOM to mess with the data, to mess with the, the rhetoric, to bring up all kinds of excuse. The coconut heads, as the caller said. And then he starts to say that he doesn't, he can't call elections. That's a fake president. He is the undertaker. Yes, can I help you? 
I got problem with the law because of the law on the legal aspect. Now, the National Registration Act, the Action Law Amendment, mm -hmm. this act, if you remember in 2007, the House to House survey, and to use that data towards continuous registration, there has to be an amendment. That one, there was no amendment. That one, two, that the act gives the power of these things like how South registration by the, to the commission and not to the chief elections officer. So how could the chief elections officer? There was no commission when when they started this whole so so they Well that's why that's why the judge halted the process. I mean the Chief Justice ruled against it? No 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 but I am against her decision too because in these circumstances it is illegal. She say it is illegal. You got to look I agree how South survey registration is a part of the responsibility of But in the circumstances, it was started by the chief elections officer and there was no commission in place. Yes. That yes. shared. Well, I mean, thank you. We will all understand the delaying tactics. I mean, we can look at it in, in many different forms, but it was an act to delay elections by Mr. Granger. It was an act to delay elections by Mr. Granger, who is afraid of elections. The PNC is afraid of elections. I don't know if the doctors have told Mr. Granger that, you know, maybe in January, he would be ready for a rig rigorous campaign. And he's trying to buy time to, to get stronger, to go on a campaign trail. I don't know what it is, but the Constitution doesn't call for that. The Constitution says we need a healthy president. We need to have, you know, and I tell people, I would, if I was an APLU supporter, I better be looking to see who else is going to take over for Mr. Granger. Because if you think you voted for Mr. Granger, the chances are you're not. You interpret that however you want. But... When you vote for Mr. Ali, you know you're voting for a young, vibrant uh, person that is going to implement a PPP manifesto. And I can tell you, I've seen the manifesto. As a, as a business guy, I will tell you, all of it, when put together, when implemented, the return on investment of the PPP, each of us, as shareholders of that vote will benefit all across Guyana. Every one of Guyanese will become a shareholder. Whether you vote for the PPP or not, you will become a shareholder of the PPP plan. When implemented, will change our nation that we have never seen before. And the man for the job, Mr. Ali, as a, as a bright young economist, understands an integrated approach. He has been able to prove that he can deliver. He's a young minister that did 10,000 plus house lots a year. He created the entire tourism and commerce industry in our country. As a single minister running two to three ministries, imagine the man is president what he would be able to do. You ask yourself, what Mr. Granger ever ran? He never ran the army. He was never commanded. He was never the head of the army. He ran a magazine after he retired. So if you never ran the army, you ran a magazine, you don't have any background on economics. You don't know what it's like to govern and manage a large operation, even a ministry, two ministries. You see why the man failed. He was the wrong man for the job. And he proved the PNC took a risk. You know, people voted for, you know, just this newness. And I probably understand why some may have. But what they have done is paid the price for a man that couldn't even manage a coalition. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good day. 
Are we voting for a man for sending to Cuba? I <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, so we know, and I've said many times in this program, Mr. Granger single handedly voted against the specialty hospital that the PPP had funded and, and proposed, designed, ready to be built. Mr. Granger, as the opposition leader, voted his single vote cancelled the specialty hospital his single vote as the 33rd vote cancelled the specialty hospital and then he took our money and went to cuba i said many times if any of us get cancer we're dead if you can't afford to travel outside of guyana we don't have the the treatment here to go through saving you from cancer but if we had that specialty hospital today you would live you would have something to look forward to mr granger single-handedly voted against the specialty hospital and look where he's at today he's lucky really lucky he can use our money to go to cuba hello hi good afternoon mr Zio. how are you keeping good very good but so today, these people now come out when you want them for come out you know and then again they're gonna put a person to want something million dollars in, in, in and they're supposed to be a caretaker government again you watching it from facebook there that there's somebody post it up said they just approve when they're supposed to be they ain't supposed to be spending money for the, the, the department no more yes really going on with them well you see i mentioned thank you i mentioned when you have dictatorship you can do what you want you have no rules you don't follow the constitution you're not elected now legally because you've passed the stage of when your term is supposed to end based on a no confident vote so a dictator does what they want Saddam Hussein Gaddafi did what they want look at Syria look at some of the, the countries that feed, you know feed the Castro in Cuba they did what they want. That's dictatorship. Mr. Granger is now equal to Gaddafi and Saddam because he is illegal and he is a dictator because he is now breaking every law in our country. He's not supposed, you agree, I agree, not supposed to be spending money. The only thing that it can do is to call an election date and get ready for election, go campaign all they want. That is what the law says in Guyana. So when you're breaking the law, you are a dictator. Hello, can I help you? Hi, hi Peter. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If President Granger doesn't know much, how is he gonna run this country? Thank you. Another thing is, the foreigners are gonna help because they can take President Granger for a ride, but they cannot take President Jack Bale for a ride. There's no comparison with President Jack Dio and Mr. Granger. You put the two of them together and it's like night and day. After Jack Dio, Mr. Granger, somewhere down here, can't even compare as president. You know, when you can take a bankrupt country and bring it to the level that Guyana is today, even when I was you know, sometimes fought with Mr. Jaggi over the years. I remember when I shook his hand in 2010 and I said, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jaggi, Mr. Jaggi at the time, I said, you know, I've fought for certain programs in Guyana. I've sought, fought for certain changes. But you know what, Mr. Jaggi, you have done it. And I shook his hand and said, we are on the same team now. You have proven me wrong. You did what I thought no one can do and he ran he took this country and made it where we're at today and mr granger with a few years brought it down back to his knees so the two doesn't compare and why i'm excited about 2019 and beyond with mr irfan ali is because i believe he's going to be a great president you know he wants to see every one of us he said as a shareholder so when you have a shareholder in a company, everybody benefits when the country benefits. And that's why I believe, even if you're an APNU supporter, 
your best bet right now is to vote for the PPP or don't vote for APNU, definitely, or PNC. Because you want to be a shareholder of our future. You want to be a shareholder and benefit from the next decade of the programs. When we talk about just reversal of taxes and joint services bonus and looking at our agriculture industry and reviving sugar and then, you know, expanding rice, expanding our cattle farming, expanding our non-traditional agriculture, expanding our gold as much as oil. We say oil is big. I can tell you gold is probably bigger. We've got tons and tons of gold that we have never gone down for yet. We've got bauxite. We solve our energy, which we will very shortly. And you start manufacturing. We start bottling our own okra in cans to export or our own boro in cans to export. We expand our coconut industry. Bottle coconut water around the world is very expensive. Imagine those things happening in the next decade. That is what Guyana has to look forward to. So you're voting for that. You're voting for yourself by putting the PPP manifesto in place to implement. Take the risk, APNU supporters. Take this risk one time. Regardless of what you think, you're voting this time for the economics. You're not even voting for the politics. You're voting for the economics and the change of Guyana. Don't put it in, Mr. Granger. You saw what he did to you. He saw what he did to us. You put your vote next to Mr. Granger. You are signing our own debt warrant. You are signing the debt warrant of our kids because we will not be able to recover this country regardless of what kind of oil wealth. Imagine, we talk about this, all this oil wealth that Mr. Granger has given away to these oil companies. How many of you have been hired? How many of you are benefiting so far from the oil companies being in Guyana? I can tell you, very, very minimal. But go, go to some of the trade agent companies that have registered in Guyana and a 30 million US dollar contract, they are benefiting. Our local companies are not getting even a quarter or eighth, you know, one sixteenth of what these foreign companies are getting. You're not hired. Tells you the story. You know, what billions of dollars is being spent right now in our nation. You know, pipes and and supplies are coming in, going into the oil rig. You know, how many billions of dollars? Are you seeing any of that? You vote for Mr. Granger, he's going to continue to give away our wealth. So take the risk. Put and implement the PPP manifesto in the next five years, and every one of us as a shareholder will benefit. Hello? Hi, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, you're doing a wonderful job. Uh, I just kind of because, you know, I mean, the crisis and the economic rises in our. Um, Thank you. One, they don't care. If Mr. Granger cared, he wouldn't have called the miners this week. And instead of apologizing to them for screwing up their lives in the last four years, he called them to ask them what their grudge is now. So he thinks they'll vote for him next round. That is not caring. That is stupidity to the highest extent. You're going to call me to your house after you screwed my life up and tell, ask me to tell you how you screwed my life up. Cost of living is gone up. I mentioned CPL tickets. How many of you really, really had to sacrifice to buy those tickets? How many of you, when you go to the market now, look at your, your wallet and your purse? and wonder you know how much could I spend you look at those people feel sorry for them thousands out of work across our country sugar workers rice farmers they don't have money you know they can't buy the CPL tickets they couldn't even buy their school children books and supplies because they not only lost their job but they lost the ten thousand dollar grant Plus, we're paying all these taxes. So Mr. Granger doesn't care for our nation. 
that's probably you know I I believe as history writes itself currently and over the next decade you will see that Mr. Granger will go down in history as the worst president he will beat Mr. Barnum in the four years Mr. Barnum had 20 you know plus years Mr. Granger had four years and he will beat Mr. Barnum as the worst president of our country hello can I help you hello brother good afternoon brother good afternoon Say that again. I'm calling for real. Okay. This is real. This is the facto government. They just want to hold on to power. Things are clear. They don't want to call election. Right? And if you call it going in the country, what are that going to do to the industry? They close down the industry. Now the people are suffering. Five, five women are being left their husband and gone away. This is a still close down. About 640 commit suicide by the industry. So they, they don't care about the industry. They're full in the packet. They want to buy the election that they have made or some time here just to get a piece. If the dollar is a piece, they pay up 600 million US in the treasury. They got a lot of that. Then they get a fuck out of money. They get a million dollars. They, they, they want to steal that car too. So. so they want to hold on to piece the 300 million US here. Thank you. The day of reckoning will come for Mr. Granger for the treachery and the betrayal of our nation. When our people suffer, it's the worst thing that anybody could have done to us. Your water bill, your electric bill, we know you're paying VAT on it. Ms. Ali said day one with a stroke of a penny will take that off. You will reverse our taxes. Your data, you know, on your data plan on your cell phone, you're paying taxes. That will be taken off. The school grant I mentioned will be re-implemented. The joint service bonuses will be re-implemented. The tax reduction, the threshold will be increased. That's money back to us. And it's sad that we've got to wait till after elections for that to happen. We have proposed that many times over the years. You know, Mr. Granger reduced VAT from 16% to 14%, then raise all the other taxes. So he's con us. You know, that's a con man. To raise, say he raised six, reduced 16 to 14, then he brought all these other taxes on the other end. So if you compound it, I tell you, I calculate, we're probably paying 19 to 20% worth of taxes right now. But you know what? He made a promise. He said he delivered it, but he lied about all the other things. The PVP in their manifesto is making a bold and strong commitment. In 2019 and beyond in the administration, there will be no new taxes. That alone, should get you voting for the PPP. No new taxes. You put your vote against the cup in the elections. And that and the reversal are two big things. That's money back in your pocket immediately. And much less the implementation of a broad economic plan that would see our energy reduction, our cost of electricity, our goods and market being exported, our industries revived, that's another vote. That is what real politics and economics is about. And that's what real plans and why your vote is so important this time. As I come to the end of my program, I'll take one last call. Yes, hello. Our full nation, but Jack, you promise your own. We rather this government there before they kill us. Yes, we rather, rather promise. Okay, sir, thank you. You're still alive. I'm glad. Nobody killed anybody at a crime wave. You were doing much better. I didn't get a chance to ask you 
What were you making prior to 2015 and what you're making today? Unless you're a government official, you're not making any more money. Your money went to pay the minister's highest salary. It went to give Hamilton Green a bigger pension when he was an illegal prime minister for decades, never was voted under a dictatorship, rigged election. That's where your money went. So if that's what's killing the economy, that's what killed the economy. Poor management from Mr. Granger. As I said, I will take one more call. And, um, but I want to wrap up. Your vote this time is critical. We know we are in disarray in our nation. We know the countries that are stand still. All of us just want to get it over with. The Constitution says have elections. The country believes we should have elections. The international com countries have come out and says we should have elections. The opposition party has come out and says we should have elections. Civil society has come out and says we should have elections. Non-government organizations have come out and said we should have elections. The people have come out and said we should have elections. And the PNC and Mr. Granger says we don't want elections. We're afraid. So we're going to break the law and we're going to disobey the Constitution. We're going to stay on in power. We're going to lie and say it's GCOM. But we have infiltrated GCOM and we will delay it as long as we can. But I tell you, it does, a, it does matter. But the day we have elections, they know they will be voted out. And I urge you to pay attention to the PPP manifesto. I urge you to become a shareholder of our plan. It will benefit every single Guyanese, regardless of your race, regardless of your color, regardless of where you live, regardless of who you vote for. But if you really want to see this plan really get the positive energy and the power to be implemented, you know where you need to put your X this next election. So work your way to it. If you put your ex next to Mr. Granger, you're getting a man that has not delivered for you. You've got a man that may not even make it in the next couple of years to run a country. You don't know who else you will get, probably some of those Cookman heads. But you put your ex against a plan, an economic plan, against leadership that will deliver, against a country that is going to be united, come together at our economic spread across. You put a plan that will not give away our wealth to foreigners that Mr. Granger has done. You put that plan in place. We all become shareholders of that plan. Your vote is critical this next election. Do not give it away. Do not stay away. Get ready to benefit from a governance of Mr. Ali and his administration that will take this country to new heights. And I know many people around the world are going to pay attention. A lot of people are going to want to come to Guyana. But we want to make sure our Guyanese are taken care of first. And if we got some leftovers, we'll share it. But it's our job, our people's job to ensure we, the people, benefit first. And not allow Mr. Granger to give away any more of our wealth to the Trinidadians, the Haitians, the Venezuelans. The American companies, the British companies, not to give away our wealth anymore. It's allow our people to benefit, give us the concessions, give us the tax free, let us compete, fair and square, let our people get the jobs, stop going after other companies that you want to take away billions of dollars now from them to ruin their companies when they're employee, employing your wife, your husband, your children. The GBTIs of the world. Stop it, Mr. Granger. Get on with calling the elections. You know, maybe there's some room for forgiveness for your dictatorship. But the more you continue, it's becoming almost a criminal act for your cabinet to continue to function without the approval of the Constitution, without following the Constitution. And if you're a public servant, I urge you not to be signing any documents that you know is illegal or keep track of who told you to do it because these are dangerous times and we've got to commit 
to ensure democracy never fails. And it's our right to stand up. The pressure will continue. All of us need to be part of it. And I look forward to all of us joining with civil society, the People Progressive Party, non-government organization, the international community, in telling Mr. Granger, it's time you go, or it's time you call elections, and let's ensure democracy never fails in our country, democracy prevails, and the rule of law is all we ask for. Thank you for joining me. God bless you. Enjoy the cricket, and let's have some fun the best way we can. But after the cricket, realize that we've got to go back to the fight. And even at cricket, when you see your neighbors, shake their hand and ask them, was it difficult to buy this ticket? Did you have money? Did you sacrifice? Do you want to see a better life for your family? Then you know where to put that vote next time. The PP administration, the PP party, and their manifesto, and their leadership, is ready to take our country, transform our nation, take it away from the undertaker, and transform our economy where every one of us get a bite, get a share to take care of our families. God bless you.